everybody. Happy Wax on Wednesdays. I have always had a love for old botanical illustrations and I love all the way late 1700s all the way up through the early uh, 20th century. I love looking at them and I found a great website called the Biodiversity Heritage Library and they have scanned their collection of originals in and they have very high res resolution images available to print out and I thought this would be a great opportunity to print both black and white and color onto the encaustic surface. I've printed these out on my laser printer and I'm going to list exactly the paper and the printer and everything that I use on the website blog post for this week's video. And I'm going to start out here first with a black and white image and I'm marking the center just so I can make sure that it's centered on my encaustic surface. All my boards today have been prepped already with four coats of white encaustic medium fused flat in between each layer. And that's probably one of the most important steps of transferring an image is to make sure that your wax is fused very flat before you begin because you want that image to go on smoothly. And here I'm just using the back of a spoon and I'm going, this is very sped up, but it takes quite a long time, especially on an all over image like this. I'm doing it, this image, these images today are covering almost the entire surface. So it's going to take a long time to burnish these on and I'm going in every single direction. I'm going back and forth and across, turning the board, going in circles. If you think that you've burnished enough, then go back and burnish for a few more minutes. And this really is a lifesaver when you go to uh, remove the paper because you don't want to have taken all that time and have all of a sudden have a missing part to your image after you worked that hard to and spent all that muscle it's almost like a workout uh, to go ahead and burnish these images so really make sure that you um, do it for quite some time and do a thorough job here I'm just gonna put water all over the image and just get it sort of wet uh, my copy paper is a thicker hammer mill copy paper and like I said I'll list that in the website but it's a good quality uh, laser paper and so I go ahead and get the whole image wet just a little bit first a little bit damp and then I begin to lightly go over and I say lightly um, I'm not going at it like I was with the spoon when I was burnishing this is a very light-handed touch to begin to remove the paper and it just starts balling up under your fingers and you simply keep going until all of the paper is removed and again, this is really sped up um, and some parts of it are cut out just not to bore you to death, but it takes quite a few minutes to get all of this paper pulp off. And I'm just very, very lightly rubbing it all over and then every once in a while clearing that paper pulp off. You can see it start to build up there uh, around, my, around the edges of my piece. But it just is a very slow process, very delicate, and you want to make sure that you don't get any holes in your image. And after you do this a few times, this is usually the scary part for most people is peeling back this paper with your hand. And after you do it a few times, you'll get a feeling of um, the, pa the paper when it's enough. Um, when it doesn't ball up anymore in your hands, um, you start to uh, feel like there's less and less and less paper coming off. And then of course you can feel the smoothness of the wax surface. Now there's always gonna be probably a little bit of peach fuzz left and I usually set these out to dry for you know about 10 minutes and let that paper sort of dry a little bit and see how much peach fuzz is left. If there's a bunch of it or I have a built up paper in area I'll go back and wet it again get it off uh, but if there's just a little slight layer of peach fuzz then I'll go ahead and fuse it and that it'll fuse right in there. And transferring images onto encaustic is a really exciting process, but there are several delicate steps to this process and fusing is one of them. You want to make sure that you're fusing just to a glisten on the lowest setting and then removing the heat. And this is one of those super fun encaustic techniques that just take practice, practice, practice to really get a feel for it. And eventually after you do it several times, you'll get a feel for how long it takes to fuse, how long it takes for the paper to come off, how long it takes to burnish an image onto the wax. And I'm going to go ahead now and do a color one because color one tra image transfers are super fun. And you can see I printed out one of these in color and in black and white. You can transfer them in your um, print settings or in Photoshop. And I also reversed 
uh, the image has a little bit of text on it and I went ahead and reversed that and you can do a mirror image in your printer or you can reverse it in Photoshop to make just to make sure that those uh, words will come out looking readable when you print them out and transfer them onto your image so you want to make sure if there's any text or words in the image that you're printing that you go ahead and reverse that before you print it so it comes out right on your transfer. And I'm going to go through the same exact process here and wet the image entirely and then begin to let, rub really lightly until the paper starts balling up in my hands and it will um, eventually come off and reveal the color image. I also wanted to share that there are some super fun things that you can do with these images in Photoshop, not just um, reverse the mirror image, but you could also, of course, convert them to black and white. So you can do one of these oranges in color and one in black and white, and that's really fun to um, to do. You know, convert it to black and white and print it out, especially if you have an all black and white uh, aesthetic that you're going for and you wanted to do some of the older illustrations that are in black and white and you like this orange but you don't want the color, you want them all black and white, just convert it in black and white either in your print settings or in Photoshop. You can do it in either one. Um, in Photoshop, another fun thing to do is to invert. And if you invert these images, it will surround the image with all black instead of that white background. And that's really fun too. Now that uses a lot of ink. So you have to have um, a lot of ink, black ink ready to go there in your printer. But it is really fun to reverse that, and especially in the black and white images, it will inverse the black and white so the white becomes the image with a black background. And that's kind of really cool too if you have enough black ink to do that. That is a really fun uh, way to do it here. And it actually ends up looking like an old uh, blueprint. And I think that's why I, I think it looks so cool. This one is another floral and I decided to do this one as just fill up the entire piece with it. And um, so I enlarged it just a little bit and I thought that that was a really cool, this is an eight by eight. And I love um, the all over floral on this square image. Here on the edges, you can see that I had a slight, when I was fusing a slight um, depression in the edges there where it went down and it didn't wasn't fused completely, completely flat. And so that's why you have that missing on that edge of the image. And I decided to do one more. This is a little fern leaf on an 8x10. And when I'm done with these boards, I'm going to go ahead and finish the edges with black paint. And then I'm going to go ahead and put them in float frames. And they look, these little botanicals look really great in the float frames. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this process and try out some uh, botanicals, some image transfers, and I hope you really enjoy that website. I will see you next Wednesday and happy wax on Wednesdays.